as a man who has dedicated his life to thinking about fashion and style, I'm sure that you're familiar with the recent New York Times article redefining what hotness means, saying that hotness is no longer in the eye of the beholder. It's a mood. It's a vibe. A social media movement inspired by the rapper Megan the Stallion strikes back at the gatekeepers of beauty. Do you see this? I am not familiar with this at all, but maybe it's because I don't go out my way to find fashion articles. Wow, that surprises me. So no, many no people, interest. many people are expanding the definition of hotness, taking it beyond its former association with old notions of attractiveness. These days, being hot no longer pertains to only your physical appearance, but includes how you move through the world and how you see yourself. Many of those pushing for a broader understanding of the term are also pushing back against the idea that you need to wait for confirmation from someone else before feeling justified in calling yourself hot. To them, hotness is a self-declaration, and that's that. Hotness is no longer in the eye of the beholder. It's a mood. It's a vibe. Emily Sundberg, 28-year-old editor and filmmaker in Brooklyn, was eating spaghetti when she had a realization. She was hot. There was nothing glamorous about it. It was just a solo weeknight dinner in the kitchen counter, and Ms. Sundberg was wearing workout clothes and glasses, but she felt moved to make a video of herself as she twirled pasta strands on a fork and For succeeded, succeeded in getting most of them all the way into her mouth. As she chewed with Kanye West's jail blaring in the background, she stared into the lens with a blank expression. So this is hotness in Zuma generation. What's the sexuality, the sexual orientation, where you're attracted to people because of what, the way they think? Their brain. It's something, oh. like, it's something like sco scopiosexual or yeah, yes. some, sapiosexual. Some, sapiosexual. There we go. Sapiosexual. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I I wasn't familiar with this article, but you know, it, it, I, I guess it's fitting into this this whole movement's obsession with the way that b beauty is uh, is not a thing. Beauty is a sort of a, a, a patriarchal Western construct, and um, therefore anything can be beautiful. But the thing is, some things just aren't. <laughs> I've right. seen the video of her twirling her noodles or pasta or whatever it is into yeah. her mouth. Uh, I've seen it done better. It's First off, it's not the thing that I think of in the top echelons of hotness, and I've seen yeah. it done better. But you don't have to ask for permission to be hot online, Ms. Sundberg said. There's not one thing that defines what hot is. It's confidence. It's the way you dress. It's the way you present yourself you to other people. You don't get to decide whether you're hot. Well, for one thing, it is subjective. Let's be honest. People are attracted to different types. You know, some people are attracted to, you know, skinny people. Some people are attracted to fat people. Some people, you know, th that, you know, blondes, brunettes, whatever. It, that's true. Um, but you don't get to decide that you're attractive as a kind of label, right? I can't. I can't Can I not self-identify as hot? Well, I wouldn't have thought so because to whom? <laughs> you know, doesn't it depend? What if someone's, you know, someone who's uh, like, you won't be hot to a lesbian, will you? Well, maybe that's their prejudice showing. Well, if you were the head of Stonewall, that's exactly what you would think. Ah, yeah, you had a run in with them. You're not. Am you're I? Not, well, I mean, just generally, you're always unhappy with them. No, it's not. I'm not. Un, well, no, I am unhappy with them because I think, you know, it's it's such a shame that an important gay rights group in the UK is now uh, promoting anti-gay ideas. So, yeah, that makes me a bit sad. Um, Nancy Kelly, the CEO of Stonewall, described women, lesbians who want who don't want to have sex with people with penises who identify as women but are male. She described them as sexual racists. I think that's a problem. She compared them to anti-Semites. Uh, I think we used to call that kind of phrase uh, homophobic, didn't we? So, yeah, I do. And, and my issue with Stonewall, you know, quite apart from all the other things, is that I invite them onto my show constantly all the time. And they just never say yes, because they say we don't have debate. But I want to ask them about their policies. I want to ask them why they changed the, de the definition of homosexual on their website and their promotional materials to same gender attracted, which is not what it means. It means same sex attracted because gay men aren't attracted to people who identify as men. They're attracted to men. It's very and, much uh, about the penis with gay men. In my sort of tangential understanding of what gay men like, it's very much about the penis. That, don't pretend that's tangential. You've done some research. <laughs> <laughs> clearly you've done it's about the things. penis and not just the penis plasty it's about the yeah i mean well that's clearly an, an element and y y the i the you know i get that that there's more to uh same-sex attraction than genitals that's absolutely true but but you're you can't feign sexual attraction and you can't relearn uh your innate sexual orientation which is what they're kind of implying what nancy kelly is saying in stonewall is what the homophobes used to say to gay men you know you you just haven't found the right girl yet you know you need to open your mind a little bit more you need to you know all of that 
stuff. It's just recycled ancient tropes. It's really, it's so really are sad. They, are they saying you haven't found the right trans man yet? Uh, well, they're suggesting that if you if you close off certain demographics from your dating pool, then that's the result of bigotry. But of course, everyone does that. Everyone does that in one way or another because everyone has uh, a type, uh, someone that they are types of people that they are attracted to. And sure, sometimes there can be people from other categories that surprise you or what, whatever. Sexuality is complicated. But the idea that if you're not attracted to a certain type of person, you need to relearn that and examine your own bigotry and prejudice. It's just, it's just homophobia dressed up as something else, that's all. It's also happening elsewhere, right? So if you can yeah. see how this hotness discussion would slowly encroach onto some sort of bigotry, mm -hmm. men that don't date bigger women would be sizes. And right. interestingly, you don't see as much about women dating short men. There's not really as much criticism for women for doing no. that. If you've got some five foot five guy and he's saying, well, why is it that women shouldn't date me if I have to date fat girls? Doesn't seem... They are, they, I mean, this idea that you, you have a right to be, to be attractive, to be considered attractive, and you have a right to go out with someone. Like, if someone says no, isn't that the end of the conversation? <laughs> No, I don't know. Maybe not anymore. So this Sundberg lady finished up here and she said, that doesn't, need, that doesn't mean that you have to be the most symmetrically, physically perfect human being. I feel like that isn't even as desirable anymore. Our definition of attraction and attractiveness has expanded so much. Well, your publicly stated preferences have, but your revealed preferences, something would tell me, is going to end up with you not sleeping with the homeless guy on the street that doesn't have a job and only has like two yeah. teeth. Yeah, quite exactly. This person's a hypocrite, right? I, I, I missed this article. I don't know how I missed it. Did this go viral? I normally get sent this nonsense because when it, <laughs> I normally because my job now every day, you know, I get up in the morning and I I, uh, I search for this stuff or people send me this stuff because I obviously have to collect material for my show on the Sunday. Um, so I don't normally this miss one stuff. snuck underneath the radar. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.